Do you want to do a Simpsons and Undertale fan dub? Like, right now? No. I don't. Like, I That's quote that- That's worse than Solid Snake. No, I quote that video constantly. You do. You have a script that you live on. First, you have to reference Tome. Then you have to do an entire- you have to do an entire out loud reading of Simpsons vs. Undertale. The whole, the whole script, d and doing the voices and everything. And then you make another Tome reference. Unironically, yeah. That's what it's like to be in a room with you. I am just an absolute For bug man. <laughs> a bug master, you might say. <laughs> yeah. We should just do a full, like, English dub of the fucking Bugmaster movie. Now that I would do. Abs with without question, I would do that. I feel like you would have to be Ginkgo. You think so? Well, I mean, we already established when we were watching the English dub of the anime that the voice for that voice actor and my voice are kind of similar. Yeah. I sound like him sometimes. So in that sense, I, I could be Ginkgo. Which makes me happy because I love Ginko. We all love Ginko. As if he were our like own son. That's true, yes. But in the instance of making a fan dub of that movie, there would be much conflict about who has to play Rainbow Man. I I, I honestly feel like you might have to be Rainbow Man as well. I, so I have to be both members of the most important romantic couple in the entire franchise? I, I think so. Cause like I have this That's thing where incredible. I literally cannot do any voices other than my own. So. <laughs> wow, that was fucking amazing how you did that. <laughs> you just dropped like a sack of bricks. It looked like they lined up. Armor. It did. I'll I'll be honest. It did. But no. no, it's true though. You can play hags. <laughs> I can play hags. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I mean, that's a gift, really. I could not play any characters of consequence because it would literally just be my voice. So what you're saying is that if we made a fan dub of this movie, it would actually be me making a fan dub of the movie. I mean, I, I, I'd voice somebody. I could voice the old lady who like jams the knife in that girl's arm and then like all okay. the blood and moosey spew out. I could yeah. make all the little moosey noises. I could go, me, 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 I don't know if we need to up those. <laughs> I don't think those need to be translated. I don't know. It'd give me something to do besides, like, edit it. It would be hard to fan dub a movie because we don't have access to the original audio files, which means we would just have to either mute the audio of the movie or just talk over the movie. You gotta do it like and the uh, Russ and Street Fighter movie dub where they just, like, make it quiet anytime anybody says <laughs> anything and then they yell their lines over, like, the people who are actually talking in the movie. I fucking hate that so much. <laughs> I really do. Didn't we watch it in Russian for some reason? Yes, we did! God, that was stupid. <laughs> and you could still that hear, like, all the English that. lines under the Russian lines. That's so stupid that we did it that way. <laughs> that is a good movie. Yeah. I gotta find that scene of where, like, uh, the Russian Ryu guy, like, is on the cliff and he puts his arm up and he goes, Yeah! I'm Ryu! Holy fuck, I actually forgot about that. We fucking laughed so hard at that shit. Yeah. That was hilarious. Do you have any opinions about the new Street Fighter? You know, it's been a while since I was super deep into fighting games. 
so I haven't been paying attention to the rollout of the game as much. What I will say, though, is that it looks really good. Like, I, everything that I've seen so far of the game has impressed me. I think the character designs for the new characters, like, some of them are really awesome. The graphics look quite good, even though they don't look that different from the last game. Uh, and I'm excited about... Capcom seems to be taking it in a different direction and putting a lot of effort into making the presentation really, really good, which is kind of the most important thing to me. Yeah. Um, and they're doing a lot of cool fan stuff and, like, trying a lot of new weird shit. Like, it seems like they're really trying hard to make the single-player content good, which I think is a good thing. Um, so, I'm optimistic about it. Oh. Oh, yeah, I hate this boss. The Ooh, fucking fuck. grub. It's using mode 7. You don't stand a chance. If I remember correctly, he's not too hard. He just has some, like, incomprehensible tells for some of his moves. And he was designed by fucking HR Giger. Well, How are you supposed to get out I completely forgot that? about that. I feel like <laughs> we're eventually going to play, like, every Ghosts and Goblins game on the channel just because... I have a normal fixation on these games. I mean, there's a fuck ton of different ones, though, aren't there? Like, an actual fuck ton. Yes. I think... And the arcade versions. I'm not going to separate the arcade versions from, like, the console versions, unless they're, like, meaningfully different. That being said, though, I think I've beaten every Ghost and Goblins for... Except for the one on Wonder Swan. Because who the fuck has a Wonder Swan? Literally nobody else. God, there's so much ahead of us. And the great thing about the Ghosts and Goblins games is that every single fucking one of them from every decade on every system is the same. How would you feel if, like, one day we did, like, a tier list video where we separated every creature into, like, either being a ghost or a goblin? I feel like that's edging very close to something that, like, Brian David Gilbert. <laughs> I feel like he's almost already done that video, you know? Gotta beat him to the punts. Maybe. But that's also how you know it's gonna be a good video. If it's something that you would do. Yeah. It's like, he makes some good videos, I will say. Name a better video idea than, like, Pumpkin ranking Cowboy. every Castlevania enemy by, like, how sexy they are. That is a great video idea. Yeah. And also his music video that he made. Oh, where yeah. Where he went all yeah. city pop. What, what, what was it? Breezy Slide? Yeah, Breezy Slide. That's it. That's a really good one. That's I like that a lot. That's a great video. Yeah. I'm about to break into a Breezy Slide right now. If this bat, oh, like, bite me again. Is Breezy Slide what it's called when you just slide off a platform and die? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good term for it. <laughs> Damn, I just got Breezy Slid by this fucking bat. Yeah, that works. Now, that that is incredibly funky. It's very good. It's a good song and a good video, which really, to me, the visuals are, like, just as important as the song. I'm very much a music video guy. Like, if a song doesn't yeah. have a good music video, it's a missed opportunity, you know? Because a music video is so important. And that's a great music video. Like, the little chorus part where he goes, like, and then I'm going to break into, like, a breezy slide or whatever the lyric is, that part is so good. I just want that on repeat. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's incredibly vibes. City pop is really an unbeaten genre, where it's like one of those genres where if you look it up on YouTube, I don't know if it's possible to find a bad song. Yeah. And yet there's so much. You know, Ooh. you got your Miki Matsuraba, your Taiko Onuki. I love her. She's your the fucking... best. Yeah, she's amazing. She has like one of my favorite songs of all times. Uh, Labyrinth. Sunshower album. And Labyrinth, yeah. Like, just great shit. Um, let's see, what are some other ones? Oh, where's, what's that male artist's name? I can't remember his fucking name. I'm pretty sure if you have the knife, you can beat this guy in one cycle. Can I jump? Oh, I bet. The yes, knife no. is way fucking better. I can jump. Oh, oh that barely grazed my, own, my ankle. I'm uh, thinking of Tatsuru Yamashita. That's the male artist I'm thinking of. He's one of my favorite artists. Amazing. Uh, yeah, there's just a shit ton of good stuff. I don't know who made it, but, like, that fucking Bright Lights, Big City, like, song, that's, like, one of my favorites. Yeah, I don't remember who that's by either, but also, um, 
I think it's Maria Takeuchi is the girl who made Plastic Love, maybe? Yes. She's good. And she's also, I think she is the wife of Tatsuru Yamashita, maybe. And I think he might have produced that song, but I'm not sure. So that's cool. Anyway, great fucking subgenre of music. When are you going to release your City Pop album? When I'm a fucking god of production that can <laughs> make shit sound as glossy and beautiful as that. Because yeah, it's just so pretty sounding. Yeah. I don't know, like everything I've ever heard you made was like always really good. I appreciate that. That's meaningful. But, you know, they, they're just on another level. It's a whole different genre. It's a different skill set. It is. And I, I would have to move to a warm climate so I could catch the like summery Japanese coastline vibes, <laughs> you know? I would have to like live in Florida for a little while. It's a really sad thing. I was trying Florida to do the. Sucks. Opposite. That's true. No, that's the thing is that it's like it should be heaven on earth, but it's also just like cringe topia, you know? Like, fuck yeah. Florida. Oh, like, it's funny you say that, but it's like, I am like really sad because like cringe topia has completely devolved into just like, ha, oh, here's a minority I don't like, call them cringe. It's no longer like actual cringe shit. It's all just like a fucking hate sub. It's really sad. That's true. I Yeah, that is sad. Like, because like that's kind of what every space like that is doomed to eventually become because like eventually people are gonna arrive there who don't actually care about cringe they just care about like hating on certain types of people yeah and they're gonna seek out that content within the cringe like i found and, some like real yeah. people that i really enjoy who like made cringy stuff that was posted there like that fucking jewish boy rapper because he made fucking like jewish boy power or it was like the weird right. Jewish like uh parody song of the Ben Ten theme. That was fucking lit. I love that game. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the thing, is like the key to being like a good cringe appreciator is like when you watch something cringe, like unless the person who made it is bad as well as being cringe, like you have to have a certain amount of love in your heart for them, you know? You have to have a certain amount of like human compassion like, to appreciate the cringe fully and if you don't have that compassion ooh. you're not going to appreciate the cringe you're just going to feel the jeering hatred that most people feel when they see someone they don't understand like to like cringe you must like genuinely enjoy the types of people who bake that cringe you must like genuinely enjoy it in your heart you must not no, you have, have, have hatred or disgust it should all be pure joy right which joy is why it's admiration. so difficult I wish I could make something cringe. I wish I could be in a cringe compilation. That's like my fucking goal in life. I want to so truly, fully embrace yourself so much that someone cringes at you. You want to do something notable enough that it shocks people around the world and makes them go, "Wow, they really did that." You want to have an accomplishment under your belt. Yeah, because like I have genuine admiration for like the types of people who make the cringe videos that I like. I agree on some level because a lot of those people are actually really hard working. Like that uh that lady, um fucking Madame Macabre, you know? Yeah. Like her music is so shitty. But she's been making it for like a decade and works really hard on it, it seems like, and does it all by herself. And that is genuinely cool and admirable, even if it's really shitty music. Like, I and think it's there's something about that that's awesome. I don't know. I think I I think it's fair to say that a lot of her stuff would, like, actually be good as well, like, genuinely, inarguably good, if it was just, like, a little more produced. Right, like, it's held back by the budgetary factors. That and the topics of the songs are, like, the main thing that hold them back, I feel. It's, like, repeat pasta fan songs are always gonna be, like, really nice. Exactly. It, it has a shelf life for how, like, artistically relevant it can be. Yeah, it's like Five Nights at Freddy's music. Like, you can't make a career off of that. Unless you're the unless living tombstone. You're the living tombstone. <laughs> exactly. But the, the thing about that is that the living tombstone's music endures regardless of the subject matter. Because it's just well made. Yeah, a lot of his stuff is actually really good if you can get past the cringe stuff. It's talented music, yeah. Like, it's very skillfully if you're willing to overlook the fact that it's about fucking My Little Pony or Five Nights at Freddy's or whatever 
Bryn's ass thing you made music about, then a lot of it is really worth, like, listening to. Absolutely. Cultural touchstone, I would say. How long is it? Do you remember that really awesome music that our mutual friend showed us that they're going to have in, like, a game? Yeah. Like, that was really good. I like that a lot. Like, that was genuinely good. It wasn't even great. That was really good. I was super impressed by it. Yeah. And it made me think, like, uh, it was all made using, like, very, like, kind of arcade game sounding sound fonts definitely like very classic capcom sounding yeah. so today i was trying to like find ways to process my guitar signal to make it sound like it was in an arcade game and it was honestly really hard to figure out how Ooh. to do it get styled on that was pretty sick how you dodged that the easiest thing that i found to do to try and like arcade game the tone was just to reduce the sample rate and then like oh equalize it a little bit but it worked okay nice so maybe maybe who knows maybe i'll do something with that but just when all hope seemed lost i had an epiphany i am going to throw myself into the sea <laughs> <laughs>